here is integrated three, it's problem 10-60. Um, so on all of these, we're supposed to solve for X. So this is a little uh, algebra lesson. So on the first one, I see there's my X. So I wanna, um, I'm, when you do algebra, you do the order of operations backwards. So like, usually you do parentheses, then exponents, then multiply and divide, and then add and subtract. But in this case, I want to add and subtract first, so I'm going to uh, add the A on both sides. And then I'm going to um, divide by C. That cancels out, and there, that's my answer right there. So on this one, I want to add and subtract first, So because I'm going from the bottom up, because I'm undoing stuff. So I'm going to add B squared. I hope I left enough room in between these. That's going to cancel out. And then the only thing left with the X is it's getting divided by A, so I'm going to multiply by A. So those cancel out, and I have X. Here's a nice way to write it, A times C plus B squared, like that. Yeah, let's, I'm going to check that. Oh, another way to write that is um, AC plus AB squared. Okay, your answer key has it both ways. Or you can put the AB squared first and the AC second. It doesn't matter. So on this one, um, this one I'm going to use the zero product property because I have something multiplied by something else. If you have two things multiplying against each other and the answer is zero, that means either that was zero or that was zero because there's no way you can multiply two things together and have them equal zero unless one of them is zero. So you're going to set each one equal to zero. So I can already tell what would be zero, but I'll go ahead and write it out. I mean, I think you can just add A to both sides. So this would be X equals A, right? Because if X is A, doesn't that make this be zero? And if X is B here, it makes it equal zero. But you can do it, um, show your work or whatever by doing it like this. Okay, so this one adds two answers, A or B. Okay, this one, um, I have a zero over here, so I'm thinking a nice thing to do is if I could use the zero product property again, that would be excellent. So I'm going to factor out, um, I don't know, I'm just going to try. Maybe I'll factor out the greatest common factor. Hmm. The greatest, they both have A's. And they both have at least x squared in them. So let's see what happens here. So this would give me x, and this would give me c, like that. So I can do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And then I use the zero product property. I've got this thing times this thing equals zero. So one of the two things must be zero. So ax squared equals zero or x minus c equals zero. Well, if ax, how can I solve it for x? I could divide both sides by a, and I have x squared equals zero. Well, what squared equals zero? Zero squared equals zero. So I guess that's that part. And then this one, I don't know if you can just tell by looking at it, but c, it's, it's the answer is gonna be c, right? So I got, This one had two values. Okay, on to letter E. Um, this one, you know I love cross products. Sorry, I should apologize for loving cross products, but I do, I just do. Actually, cross product, no, actually, even though I love them so much, if I just multiplied both sides by A plus B, then I'd be done. So, well, I'll do it with the cross products anyway, but 
and I'll divide out the C. See, I didn't have to do cross product. I could have just multiplied A plus B and A plus B, and these would cancel out, and I have X equals A plus B all over C. Or you can do cross products if you're just in the habit of it. There you go. And then this one, I think I will subtract A from both sides first. 1 over X cubed equals um, B minus A. Well, I can't stop doing cross products. I love them so much. 1 equals X cubed times B minus A. Hmm. Hey, I should have just flipped them both upside down now that I see. So this gives me x cubed equals 1 oops, over b minus a. So I could have just, if I would have noticed right here, I could have just taken the reciprocal of each one, right? and I wouldn't have had to do this part. Um, now I'm just going to take the cubed root of both sides. So that gives me x equals the cubed root of 1 over b minus a. And I can do some things to rationalize this. Um, I could try to rationalize it, but I see your book just leaves it like that. So let's just leave it like that. And that's it.